Bob Maloney from my MMA News, and today's guest is my man Joe Selecki. And the last time we saw Joe Selecki in the cage was back in August, and he was coming off of a beautiful submission in the first round at UFC Fight Night. And uh, I know he hasn't been uh, qu quiet and and not busy since then, even though it's been eight months. He has a beautiful new addition to the family, and he is in camp right now, getting ready to take on Jim Miller at UFC. For, uh, on ABC 2 coming up April 10th. Joe, man, before we even talk about the nuts and bolts of fighting, talk to me about fatherhood, how the family is. And it's got to be, you know, listen, you're a guy of routine and it had to have changed. So, talk uh, to yeah, you know, it's, it's been fantastic. It's been, uh, it's the best thing I've ever done. Yeah, I think it probably seems because it's been eight months since my last fight, like I went on paternity leave or something. Uh, but yeah, I was ready to go. You know, she was born in September, September 9th. So, uh, they asked when I wanted to fight again. I said December would be perfect. That'd give me like three weeks to get in a new routine and then eight weeks of camp. But uh, yeah, all that aside, it's been fantastic. You know, we've, we've been uh, just enjoying the heck out of it. You know, I travel a lot for camp, so it was kind of nice. I got a couple months to train at home base before I had to get back in camp. But uh, it's been fantastic, man. It's just been, uh, it's so different. You know, it's it's, it's awesome. I, I'm, I'm a uh, person that has a very hard time unwinding and, you know, kind of leaving work at work and, and it, you know, I still think about the fight all the time, but uh, it's like these two opposite lifestyles now, you know, it's brought out a much different side of me that, uh, you know, my wife has been able to bring out where like we have a great home life, but you know, with my wife, I can like, you know, I'll, I'll sneak fight talk in on a Sunday and be like, well, I'm nervous for this or there's no time to have the baby. Like I'm just mesmerized by her. So uh, it's been awesome, man. I, I go to work, work as hard as I possibly can think about the fight, dial in, come home and it's all, you know, uh, baby videos on on the TV and talking and having fun and just laughing and it's been fantastic man I've been I've been loving every minute of it. Well, you know that grind is so is so rough on your body. It's nice to come home and have that little face to make you smile and forget about everything else. So I can understand completely how you're saying it. Two different lifestyles. Now listen, let's talk. Listen, I know when you enter the cage against Jim Miller, he is standing. He's in your way. You need what you know. You need to beat him. But I also know that you're a big fan of the sport and you're very respectful of the craft. So I just wanted to ask you to talk on. You know, listen, he's a future Hall of Famer. And I know, like I said, you don't want to look at him like that, but just the ability to almost be in the cage for 50 fights, the, the, the durability and the availability to do that. Just speak on that, Joe, because it's just incredible the career this guy has had so far. And he's still going. Oh, yeah. And, I, and I'm from Jersey. So, like, that's one of my all time, you know, fighters I look up to. Uh, I'm a big Jim Miller fan. You know, and I, I don't I'm mature enough as a competitor. I've been competing for 21 years now. Uh you know, in, in combat sports between jiu-jitsu and everything else. So uh, I'm mature enough as a competitor to be able to walk on the mat or in the cage uh, with somebody that I respect and look up to. You know, I've done that several times, um, even almost to, I would say, not tougher matchups, like Jim Miller is the toughest, but in jiu-jitsu and stuff with guys I had no business being on the mat with and, and competed or won. So I'm able to separate the two. You know, once we're on the mat, uh, the guy that is a fan of the sport is kind of gone. I'm, I'm doing the sport, you know? So I've got no problem talking about how much I respect him. And uh, that's somebody that I've said I'd like to make a career out of. You know, maybe I don't want to fight 50 fights because that sounds awful. But, uh, you know, the sense of who he is as a competitor comes out, puts it on the line for a long time, came out and would hammer somebody, you know, a top contender, and then just kind of disappear for a couple months, come back out, do it again, not in the limelight, not living some crazy lifestyle, kind of a, you know, an honorable man that you can look up to in the sport, you know, so that, that's, he's a family man. I believe he has a school. So kind of a lot of the things that I'm doing and want to do, you know, in the future. So uh, yeah, somebody that I look up to and it's almost like a, uh, you know, not, not a changing of the guard, but like uh, we're kind of meeting in the middle, you know, I, I'm trying to aspire to be that and he's done that and trying to stick around and, and keep his, you know, his status. And it's a, uh, it's the perfect time for us to fight. You know, we're, this isn't uh two young, arrogant people or, two guys fighting for fame and this is two family men providing for their families. And we're going to meet out in the, in the middle and you know, the best man's going to win. Yeah. It's a very intriguing fight for me. Now he's a South Paul. Have you ever been able to incorporate more of that in camp? Because you know, Jim, he's mostly fights most he will switch it around occasionally, but mostly he's, he's a South Paul. Yeah, we have uh, we have an unusual amount of South Pauls at my gym. Uh, unfortunately, they're all bigger and stronger than me, like John Salter and guys at that weight class. But uh, you know, that's something that, 
we'll mess guys up sometimes. I don't think as much in MMA because it's such a different range than boxing, but uh, that's something I had to get over real quick when I moved to Wilmington to train with John is I'm going to be drilling a lot with a southpaw, drilling my wrestling on a southpaw, and sparring with a southpaw. So we have, we have quite a few guys here like that. So I've uh, been good adjustments, and I have great coaches. So nothing too crazy. It almost simplifies it in a sense because a lot of the things that you would do with somebody orthodox you kind of take out of the out of, out of the picture when it comes to a southpaw. It's a lot more meat and potatoes, I feel like. So uh, between all the guys we have to train with, I'm actually uh, getting a guy ready for his amateur debut and I hold pads for him a couple times a week, and he's a southpaw, so it's even got me thinking on the other end. I'm like, oh, how is he going to attack me and vice versa? So uh, trying not to look too much into it, but we're definitely getting those looks. You know, I, I got a great team around me, and guys willing to switch stances even when they aren't natural southpaws. So it's been great. Yeah, I was checking out. You know, you have some a lot of high-quality teammates. I'm looking forward for John to get back in there as well. You know what I mean? I always like watching him fight, and he's, you know, kicking ass in Bellator. So – Joe, before we go, give some shout outs or some love. If you have any sponsors, anybody you want to say hello to, man, the floor is yours, my brother. Yeah, just what we talked about, you know, my family, uh, you know, Nora and Casey and and uh, they've just been so great. And it's been it's been I think this is the I've made a lot of strides between fights. And no matter what the result on fight night, because, you know, fighting's one night. But I know for a fact I've become a better fight. I always say training camp's my vessel to become like a, or strive to become like a a better fighter, sure, but like a better man, better husband, father, spiritually, like, and this is the best I've felt in every department of life, you know, that's my vessel to become a better person, so uh, it served its purpose, you know, the, the, the training camp, my daughter, my wife, like, I just feel like I've grown leaps and bounds from from the last time, that's all, that's all we can ask for, is you're going to see a better product uh, stepping in the cage, you know, next Saturday, so just want to thank them for, for making that happen, for keeping that fire in my belly, man, I feel like it's something that can never run out now, because of the things I'm fighting for, um, and then, you know, my, my coaches, uh, Chris Gowd, John Salter, Jeff Jimmo, and John Hassett uh, back home, just, it, again, they laid the foundation. They make my job a lot, really, really easy. I just got to show up and get tired, you know. It can, it can be grueling, but they, they take the thought process out of it. You know, I was joking the other day is I don't do anything anymore without running it by John or Jeff Jimmo. So uh, it's pretty mindless. Like, I nag them. I'll be like, hey, I'm going to go for a run. Is that okay? Hey, I'm going to wrestle tonight, like, just to make sure – all the thought process out of it. We checked every box. So I can't thank them enough. And then the guys that stepped up in training, you know, uh, we've got guys that are really, really talented, really tough, who you'll never hear of because they may not even be fighting actively. Um, so those guys, I want to thank Zach DeLeon and Wyatt Hopkins. Uh, and then the guys that are fighting, you know, I got some great sparring partners. I talked about obviously John as a training partner and coach and friend and mentor and everything he's been, but uh, Cody Jones, Jordan Weeks, Brandon Hyde, these guys that are putting in the rounds, switching stances, doing whatever they got to do to make me miserable and tired and get those looks. And uh, I, I just can't thank them enough, man. It, it really takes so many people to come together for, for one 15 minute fight. It's kind of wild. So just want to thank all those guys. Thank John Hassett uh, for everything, I guess that would, if that starts to cover it, <laughs> but um, that's, that's pretty much it, man. I, I really can't, uh, can't believe we're here. Can't believe this is next Saturday. It's it, all the fights mean a lot, but to be in this slot, where we are in the card, who it's against. And it's just, it, it, to be anything other than gracious, excited and ready to go would be, you know, I, I don't even know how else I would feel. So I'm super pumped, ready to go out there and show the world what I can do. Classy as always, Joe Selecki. It's always a pleasure to talk to you and uh, good luck on this next ch chapter in your journey. I know the journey is just getting started. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here along for the ride. And thanks for giving my MMANews.com some of your time, my brother. Good luck on your fight and final preparations, weight cut and go kill it. It's a great fight. So Great talking to you, man, as always. Yeah.